Now this feels really good for me to say this and I hope it feels just as good for y'all to hear. Team, keep it clean. I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game we all watched last night between the Ravens and the Eagles. Ooh, it's been a long time since we did a post-game thoughts video. The last one we did was in January in the AFC Championship game against the Chiefs and that was not pretty. But it's a new season, new team, but the same aspiration. Same here, clean. we about to get into it. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn them notifications on. Shout out to everybody that was there for the live stream last night. We had an excellent time. I appreciate y'all accompanying me and really accompanying us because we had a, a phenomenal time last night. Make sure you're here for the next one against the Falcons. But anyway, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications on so you don't miss a thing, a single video, single live stream, a single update when it comes to our Baltimore Ravens. And also leave a like on the video, click the thumbs up button. It takes less than half a second and it helps out the channel a lot. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all supporting so much. We here now, like it's real now. Like we here, like we, we in the full swing of things and stuff is about to get crazy. So, so you don't miss anything, please subscribe. Turn the notifications on, leave a like on the video. Let's get into it. So the Baltimore Ravens played the Philadelphia Eagles last night, and they lost, what was it, 16 to 13, I believe. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens lost on a last-second field goal, but they, they lost in such Ravens fashion. And I know it's preseason, so we got to keep that in mind. It's, it's preseason. That's super important to always remember. But they were just very, very Raven-like. That, that was so Raven. It was very Raven-esque the way that they lost um, because – the Eagles, they got in, they got set up for what was looking like it was going to be a game-winning field goal. It was like only like 20-something seconds left. Jake Elliott kicks it. It hits the upright. Boom! No good. It's like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Drew Leary, uh, excuse me, Devin Leary, who had been playing the entire second half um, of the Ravens game. He started at quarterback for them for the entire second half. I'm like, okay, they're going to bring him out. So he could throw a couple of deep balls, whatnot, try to get the Ravens in field goal position so Justin Tucker could come out and win the game for him. Nope. Harbaugh said, oh, we're going to put Emory Jones out there. And I was very confused on that because I'm like, hold up. What? Why would they bring him out for this last couple of seconds when Leary's been the quarterback for the entire sec? That was just a little confusing to me. And then um, Emory Jones, unfortunately, he got sacked, fumbled. Eagles got it back. They ran, and then they end up kicking the game when the field goal. All right, cool, whatever. Um, then, but the, the, probably the more questionable thing for me that really bothered me way more than that, because that was like, okay, whatever. If you're going to do some silly coaching stuff, hey, get it out your system now in the preseason, regular season. I know usually two to three games every year. Okay, cool, whatever, but get it out your system early. The earlier you get it out your system, the more it won't be in your system come regular season, the even less it'll be in your system come playoff time because we don't need it come playoff time, but we'll talk about that another day. Anyway, um, Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins, that was the biggest questionable decision for me because the way I looked at it, and we said it a lot during the live stream last night, Nate Wiggins – they they were trying him that first drive. They were trying him. And he said, nope. No, sir. You going to try me? Oh, no. No, thanks. Nope. I think he gave up one catch. But the stats said he had three passes defended, three pass breakups. I thought he had four. It looked like he had four to me. So, mm, it looked like he had four passes broken up, but he was in coverage for five incompletions. I believe, because there was that one incompletion where he didn't get his head turned around, but he went strive for strive with that receiver, and he was like, no, you thought you, you thought you about to burn me? No, you, you ain't about to burn me. But um, the man is just, he looked amazing, man. He, he looked great. Nate Wiggins, yeah, <laughs> he was like, and I know he wasn't going against the best of the best, but again, like we always say, it has to start somewhere. And if he had looked bad last night against somebody that's not the best of the best, then we will be having a whole nother conversation. But he looked amazing against somebody who wasn't the best of the best. But he looked the part. He looked smooth. He looked comfortable. He ain't afraid to tackle. And that's where the issue was with me. Not with him not being afraid to tackle, because we love that. Uh, especially as the Baltimore Ravens, a cornerback for the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Stevens got some sneaky strength. Brandon Stevens ain't afraid to hit somebody. You know Marlon Humphrey. He'll come up and tackle too. So Nate Wiggins, he fit right in. But in my opinion, he shouldn't have been in the position that he was in when he got that injury. I thought, and we said it so many times, after that first drive, take him out. He should be done. And honestly, my honest opinion, some of y'all might not like this, but this is how I feel. 
after that first drive, I don't need to see him no more in the preseason at all. Honestly. I don't need to see Nate, Nate Wiggins in a preseason at all. But they kept him out there for the first drive. I'm like, all right, cool. He should be done. He ain't got nothing else to prove. That's it. I felt the same exact way about Zay Flowers last year. I'll never forget Zay Flowers came out. His first drive, first preseason game, Zay Flowers was killing it. They kept getting in the ball. I said, whoa, look at this dude. And I was like, all right, Zay need to be done. He need to be finished. Because he ain't got nothing else to prove. What, what, what else is left? Same way a couple years ago with Isaiah Likely. And he wasn't even a first-round pick. He was a fourth-round pick. And I felt the same way. Isaiah Likely was out there balling. I'm like, okay, hey, look, take him out. He don't, to, he don't need to do nothing else. But with Nate Wiggins, after that first drive, I'm like, oh, he should be done. Then he was still out there. He was still balling, still doing his thing. And after the first quarter, I'm like, okay, first quarter, cool. He played the first quarter. He should be done. He was still out there. Second quarter. I'm like, second quarter, he should be done. It, that's it. What's left? What do he need to do? And then in the third quarter, that's when I was really surprised. What do, why do I still see a number two out there on the field? What's he doing out there? What, what's the reason? Did, has he not done enough? Or, and again, he was still balling, but no, he don't need to be out there. But then he got that shoulder injury. I don't think it's going to be anything serious. Um, and shout out to him because he made the play. He made the tackle. And he showed he ain't afraid to make the tackle. That's what I love about him. So much stuff that we heard about Nate Wiggins. We heard about his small frame. We heard that he's super, super fast, but he's just super, super small. But he ain't afraid to come up and get physical and, be, and, and tackle. I love that. So hopefully he's straight. I think he'll be straight. So we ain't hearing no word about him after the game. They, they, Harbaugh said they'll get an update over the next couple of days on him. So Ravens supposed to practice again tomorrow. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see when we see. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it'll be anything. But, again, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll be anything serious. But we'll see. But he looked great. He looked amazing. Um, he was one of the players that really, really stood out to me. Um, just really a lot of Ravens uh, secondary plays. But still with Nate Wiggins. They also showed his versatility last night, too, because he was playing outside corner a lot, but they put him in at the slot, too. I said, ooh, that boy, that boy, versatility. That's the name of the game. That's something that we've been talking about all offseason long, the Baltimore Ravens being versatile, and we love it. The fact that you can put so many different players at so many different positions, we love it. And now Nate Wiggins is a part of that, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, hopefully him, he gets back soon. We know Arthur Millett is already out. Trayvon Mullen uh, is out. So, yeah, we, um again, we will we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with him. Um, also on the secondary, Jalen Armour Davis, who they've continued to talk about him having uh, some good uh, a good training camp thus far, really stacking good practices. He was solid last night, too. And I, and I thought that for him it's really important that he has a really good uh, not only training camp, but preseason, too, because Ravens got some cornerback spots up for grabs. Not too many, but, yeah, he got to have a really good uh, training camp in preseason as well. Uh, Pepe Williams. Pepe Williams. He looked good, uh, but then there was one position I think that they should not have put him in. But, again, it's preseason, so you could try it out. And that was a, as a return man. Uh, as a return man, um, he did have one return that was solid, uh, but then he got a little indecisive on the other one. And I think, I don't know if he was pressing or just maybe he's just trying to make a play. He's just trying to make a play. It's preseason. You're trying to put on a show. You're trying to put on a show for the coaching staff and whatnot. Like, show them, like, hey, I'm versatile, too. I can play corner, but I can also be a return. But I did not think it was the best uh, return. The one that he um, he picked it up, like, on, like, the three, four-yard line or something like that. And I think he dropped it. Or something. I forgot what happened, but it wasn't a good return. But anyway, um, as a cornerback, he, he was back. And he's always looked solid as a cornerback, but it's just been the injuries. It's just been the injuries. That's that's been it with him and Jalen Alma Davis, but both drafted in the same year too. But it's been the injuries with both of them. Um, but he came shot straight through like a cannon um, on that blitz where he got the sack. I said, "Hi, Pepe. All right, now." So that was nice. St sticking with the secondary, somebody who I've talked about. Um, I, I I did not see, and this was even before Eddie Jackson, before Daryl Worley. I, I did not see where they fit in at, at the safety position because I always thought, and that, that's been the reason. Sanusi came, uh, Ravens' uh, seventh round pick. Sanusi came. Um, I, I talked about it how I, I did not know where he was going to fit in with the Baltimore Ravens at safety because we just knew the Baltimore Ravens were going to sign a veteran uh, at the safety position. Didn't know they were going to end up signing two of them, but and that being. Eddie Jackson and Daryl Worley, but we, we, knew, we knew that when they drafted him that they weren't going to be like, all right, Sanusi Kane, you're going to be that third safety. 
We, we, we knew that wasn't going to happen, and that's nothing against him, but just more so how the Baltimore Ravens operate since that third safety will be out there a lot. They're not going to put all that on a rookie, especially with them not being in rebuild mode, but them being in retool mode just and, and them still being contenders. So, yeah. But anyway, with him, that boy was ready to hit anything moving. And, yeah, he he got a hit stick for real, man. Like, And he, he hit the one guy so hard, he knocked himself out for a little bit. So I said, oof, man, this dude, like, physical, physical, not afraid to be physical. But as a safety, I mean, you got no choice but to be like that. Um, and also Bo Bray. Bo Bray was the same way, undrafted rookie free agent out of Maryland. And he had, he had to put on because uh, Maryland was there, University of Maryland was there. So he had to show out for his boys, his old coaching staff and whatnot. He said, hey, what's up, yo? So, yeah, he, he did his thing, too. I like Bo Bray, man. So um, them Ravens, the secondary, they they were doing their thing. Ardarius Washington, <coughs> excuse me, he made a uh, a nice pass breakup, and it looked like it was gonna be a completion, but Ardarius Washington said nope. Uh, but again, versatility, man. Ardarius Washington, corner safety, he he like, hey, wherever you need me to be, I'll be straight up. Um, somebody else who stuck out on defense to me, uh, Joe Evans, Joe Evans, number forty eight, undrafted rookie free agent out of Iowa, um, strong. Strong. He little he like a little short, but strong. Like he on all them passing plays, like just about every passing play, it felt like he saw number forty eight in the backfield. He was getting a lot of consistent push over and over and over and over and over. So it's like with him, you just knew eventually, like if he continued to play and he continued to get opportunities. Say for instance it was a regular game and he was out there a lot, like he, he was gonna make something happen. He's gonna make a play one way or another. But yeah, he you saw him getting a whole lot of push um but yeah that's that, that that's the players who stuck out to me i know the ravens their defensive line they were giving up a lot again it's preseason gotta remember that uh, but they were giving up a lot on the ground um it just felt like all them runs up the middle like they <laughs> the runs to that the bouncing to the outside i don't think they really gave up much but the runs up the middle like they they were getting crushed uh on, again it's preseason but still um but I guess like it was one of those things where it was like bend but don't break because again it's preseason. But they just gave up what sixteen points though, sixteen points. So yeah, if that was a regular season game and the Eagles got they ran like that, but the Ravens only gave up sixteen points, that's a win nine times out of ten. That's that that would be a win. So yeah, like again it's preseason. Now something real quick. That we got to talk about uh, Because While we were live streaming There were some people That were bringing it up They were like Oh man How you feel about Zach Orr How you feel about Zach Orr Some people were saying Oh Zach Orr was not a good hire The Ravens shouldn't have went with him uh, They did a bad job With hiring him I'm like what How like, what? How are we having that conversation Right now That's that's not A conversation That should be had Right now Reason being Because One It's preseason The preseason They always use that term Vanilla and when you think about something that's vanilla, like, I don't know how y'all like vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream, it has a nasty aftertaste to me. So vanilla, whenever you, the, the, the term vanilla is used, being used to describe something, that means it's bland. It doesn't have much flavor. And in vanilla ice cream terms, then it, it ain't good. It got a nasty aftertaste. But anyway, uh, they use, the, the offenses, the defenses, they are very vanilla in the preseason. They're not showing that stuff. They're not bringing out the best plays and whatnot. They're ba barely bringing out anything. So they, they, they t it's toned down. It's a very watered, watered down football game. So with people trying to judge Zach Orr already off of a first preseason game, no. You can't even judge him off the first three regular season games. I feel like with Zach Orr as a new coordinator, you got to give it time. You, you got to. Um, a, a good point that my guy uh, made last night. He said Z Zach Orr from jump, he gonna have a real big test with the Chiefs from the very, very start of the season. So, regardless of how that game goes, I feel like you can't even judge him off of that one game alone. You you gotta see consistency in, in different aspects of his game, in adjustments, in the play call, and how he uses his personnel. We gotta see levels of consistency with it because I mean, we talked about this last night. How I brought up with Mike McDonald. If we would have judged Mike McDonald off his first couple of games, we would have thought this guy was terrible. Oh, my goodness. What is, my, this, what is this guy doing? This is our defensive coordinator. Oh, my goodness. Why did they bring him back? They need to send him back to Michigan. But no. You saw what happened when you were patient with him. You saw what happened when you gave him a shot. You saw what happened as he built, built his levels of consistency with his 
adjustments, halftime adjustments. Sometimes adjustments came even before halftime. How he would eliminate key players out of the game. How he had that pass rush going. How he just he had it, man. That's why we loved Mike McDonald. And there was a lot of conversations about people feeling like he should take over as head coach. But obviously he got his job with the Seattle Seahawks. So we hope he does well over there. Not too well because we still want Ravens to win the Super Bowl. But we hope that he does his thing over there. But anyway, um, with Zach Orr, got to give it time. Got to give it time. So um, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, Josh Johnson and Devin Leary, uh, they were all quarterbacks. I know a lot of Ravens fans like – this was, for the first time in a long time, I heard the most positive comments about Tyler Huntley last night from a lot of Ravens fans. I said, whoa, what a turnaround, huh? A lot of Ravens fans really appreciating Tyler Huntley. Now they're like, oh, man, we should have kept Tyler Huntley, bring Tyler Huntley back. Oh, don't do that now. Don't say that now. Because when he was here, so many Ravens said, oh, he's terrible, he's this, he's that. But, um, yeah, Josh Johnson, I mean, I, I've been saying that – uh. I think the Ravens should sign a Ryan Tannehill. I've been saying that before the preseason game. been saying it for a while now um, because I just feel like he would be such a great fit uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, and he would be an upgrade at backup quarterback just because of his experience. It's not a shot at Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson got a lot of experience in a lot of different teams and whatnot. But with Ryan Tannehill, his, his experience uh, playing because he's played in literally every single type of game that there is to play in. Uh, he got chemistry with Derrick Henry. Um, and, again, he would be a backup quarterback. I don't expect Lamar to miss any time or anything like that because Lamar has been very, very healthy uh, throughout his career. And though the, the two injuries, the two uh, injured years that where he ain't finished the season, we can talk about that another time. But I don't think that it was what it appeared to be. But another conversation. Um, but, yeah, with Ryan Tannehill, I, I felt like that should definitely be an option uh, for sure. Uh, but we'll see. Um, <coughs> people that stood out to me. And we're not even looking at numbers because I don't want to go off numbers. I want to go off of the eye test. Um, Owen Wright. We had heard about Owen Wright. And it's funny because I think Jeff Zrebic, he had tweeted before the game. He was like, um, somebody that I'm excited to see tonight uh, is Owen Wright. He said something like that. I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he did bring up Owen Wright. I'm like, okay, we'll see. From the jump, Owen Wright bursting out the backfield, catching passes out the backfield, showing his stuff. I said, oh, okay. Okay. All right. Because that's somebody who – I didn't really consider him when it came to that third running back position because I feel like it's wide open right now um, because you, you obviously got Derrick Henry. It would have been Derrick Henry, Keaton Mitchell, Justice Hill, but Keaton Mitchell's out. So it's Derrick Henry, Justice Hill, and that, that, third, that third spot is up for grabs. Uh, Rasheen Ali, um, he, looked, he looked all right last night. Um, he looked all right. I think uh, he, looked, he started to look more comfortable as the game went along. Um, it was nice that Harbaugh didn't put him in the doghouse for that return where it looked like he kind of fumbled, but – he got hit and his elbow hit the ground, so it's down. Um, but he 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 was solid, and he kept getting more and more carries as the game went along. Uh, Cause again, I'm surprised how 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 about put him in the doghouse though? But yeah, he he looked alright, and that was his first game, so he's a rookie. Uh, Coolia, number thirty eight, I want to say he 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 looked good too at, at, at running back. Um, at wide receiver, Dayton Wade, man, I was excited to see him. The first one he dropped, I said, ooh, I think he got a little scared that uh, that safety was coming to hit him. And he, he looked and saw him, and he dropped the ball. He said, ooh, okay, cool. But then after that, um, I, I remember on that fourth down, uh, Leary hit him with a pass, and he made the Eagles cornerback miss and then broke for a little, little decent game. So that was nice to see Day, Day and Wade. And um, he's somebody I would love to see him get even more uh, catches, uh, even more passes thrown his way. Just to see, watch him with the ball in his hands, because there was that one drive where they just they they were well, not kept giving the ball because he only got it twice on the drive, but where they they gave it to him. And I, I said when I watched him, I remember when we first signed him and I watched film on him. I'm like, man, he remind me so much of Zay Flowers. He remind me of him. He plays like him. And then last night on that drive where they they gave him the ball twice, they gave him a catch, and then they gave him another catch. It's like they were moving him around, and I was like, man, this is how they do with Zay Flowers. They put him around, they put him in different positions. It's like, oh yeah, that that's that. So it was real, real nice um, to see. Uh, Sean Ryan, mm, it looked like a catch. I thought, like, I don't know, who knows what a catch is. I mean, we've been not knew what a catch was ever since the whole Dez Bryant thing. But um, he looked like he caught the ball. Even though it hit the ground, he still maintained control of it. I thought they were going to rule it a catch, but they ruled it incomplete. It was a very nice effort, though, from Sean Ryan. Um, Tez Walker, I, 
I was watching the game and I just I did not notice him till later on in the third quarter. But I don't think he got any passes thrown his way. I don't think he uh, did anything last night. Again, rookie, he he got to find his way. It's like I feel like a lot of times because I did see a lot of people they talked about Leary. They're like, oh man, this guy's bad. He's terrible. He's this. He's that. And I'm like, hold, he's he's a rookie. He's a, a six round pick. So a, a rookie quarterback So there's low expectations with Leary And like he, Because I, I feel like with people they uh, Especially with him Especially with him They're acting like Oh the Ravens They signed this superstar At the quarterback position And he's going to come in He's going to take over He's going to be the chosen one For the Baltimore Ravens For the future And it's like no Devin Leary was drafted To be a backup Possible de- Developmental quarterback Supplemental quarterback He wasn't brought into the Ravens To be the guy He wasn't so um, I feel like people put these high lofty expectations on him yesterday. It is his first game, first live action, low expectations. Uh, so it's like no, I don't think it was anything to uh to trip about with Leary last night. Um, cause again, it's he's a rookie, <laughs> he's a, he's a rookie. Um, but anyway, um, who else? But yeah, that's that's really all who stood out to me. Uh, with the offensive line, I know they had Ben Cleveland at center for a little bit, but then they took him out. Um, offensive line it's, it's a work in progress It's a work in progress They were moving some different guys around and whatnot, And uh, it was some guys who were possible starters Like Andrew Voorhees was out there uh, Ben Cleveland He's not a possible starter at center But um, he's a possible starter at right guard Daniel Falele He was out there Rosen Garden He was out there So guys were getting some reps man and, and that's what it's about So we'll see how things go But I, I did enjoy the game last night um, Just looking forward to Somebody who I want to see more of Is probably Malik Cunningham I would like to see him get some more shots At wide receiver whether, whether some jump balls Just ways to get him involved Just to see how he looks with the ball in his hands um, But certainly Dayton Wade I'm looking forward to seeing even more uh, of him But yeah overall um, the, the biggest thing for last night was getting out of there with no significant injuries. I know Snoozy Kane got evaluated for a concussion. I know Chris Board, he got evaluated for, I think it was a concussion too. Uh, and then, of course, Nate Wiggins is the biggest one. Uh, we got to see what goes down with him. But overall, fun game. I'm glad that, for the most part, uh, there were minimal injuries in the game, but they were out of the, able to get out of there safely. Before we continue, I got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, my guy, Chase. So I appreciate you, Chase, becoming a patron. And shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean channel member as well, uh, OB1 Shinobi. He became a channel member last night during the stream. So I appreciate you all supporting the channel. If any of y'all would like to become a channel member, you can click the join button. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And let's get on with the video. Now, this next question came from my guy, Mello. He said, good afternoon. So explain to me how the coaches thought our backup QB situation was good enough to not even try and develop Malik Cunningham into a backup quarterback. They gave it the old college try and say, go to receiver. Remember, I said, leave no stone unturned. You can't take three practice workouts and say a guy is trash. Ben Cleveland is the clearest example of this. His practice tape and game tape couldn't be more conflicting. Devin Leary, I let slide because his old line last night was who, who, and who? But Josh Johnson's excuse, what is our love affair with this guy? The Ravens stress me out with their decision making very respectfully. All right, so a couple of aspects to this question. Um, as far as Malik Cunningham, he said uh, they gave it the old college try and said go to receiver. Uh, he said you can't take three practice workouts and say a guy is trash. Remember, with Malik Cunningham, they had him. Since last year They didn't just bring him back Or bring him to the team this year They had him since last year And from the very jump From when they very first signed him Harbaugh said Hey we're going to try him out at quarterback But we're going to try him out at receiver And we're going to try him out at punt returner So from jump They looked at him as a project And not saying that it's right But they, they let us know from jump How they felt about Malik Cunningham um, and then this year, when they brought him back, when they signed him to sign him, re him again or kept him around, Harbaugh said the same exact thing. Going into training camp, going into OTAs, going into mini camp, he said the same exact thing. He said Malik Cunningham is going to get looks at quarterback, receiver, and uh, as a returner. And that's exactly what they did. And then shortly after, we heard rumblings about, oh, they transitioning him to a wide receiver, and that was that. So they, from the beginning... He was not looked at 
as a quarterback. And I know a lot of people brought that up last night while watching the game. Um, like, man, why with Josh Johnson and Leary, those being the uh, – the, and then Emory Jones, we didn't really see too much of him. But with Josh Johnson and Leary last night, a lot of people were wondering, like, hey, well, why can't we try Malik Cunningham at quarterback? Like, what's the worst that could happen? So, But I think that is officially a done deal um, since they have him as a receiver now. Uh, I don't think they're going to go back. Um, and I think this will be one of those things where Ravens, they try it and they hope that it works. But if it doesn't work, then they're not going to be, all right, go back to quarterback now. Because once they make that transition with a player, they stick with it for better or for worse. So I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, he also said, uh, "What Josh? What, what's Josh Johnson's excuse? What is our love affair with this guy? I feel like with Josh Johnson and the Baltimore Ravens, they feel like he is a uh, safe, cheap, familiar option. Um, and that's that's what it is for them, a safe, cheap, familiar option. Uh, that's why they, they keep bringing him back over and over. Um, but safe, cheap, and familiar, it's not always the best. But um, I feel like they just they don't want to invest that type of money into the backup QB position. Um, that's why, uh, again, they, they kept him around. He was here last year. Uh, I remember thinking, and we talked about it too, to bring up Malik Cunningham again. I thought that that's what they were going to do with Malik Cunningham. A lot of us thought that that's what they're gonna, they were going to do with Malik Cunningham. They brought Malik Cunningham on, and with Tyler Huntley's contract expiring, all right, Malik Cunningham, they they gonna let uh, excuse me, they gonna let Tyler Huntley go and have Malik Cunningham be the new backup quarterback in the 2024 season. But no, they brought Josh Johnson back again. Um, but I, I uh, yeah, I think it's about money. And again, just being safe, again, safe, safe, cheap, safe, cheap, uh, reliable option. Somebody that will be there for you. Um, as far as talent, again, he's he's a journeyman quarterback. Um, he, yeah, it's. I mean, you, what you see is what you get from Josh Johnson. Uh, again, I'm still I'm, I'm on a Tannehill train to bring him on as a backup. It could not hurt at all. But I think maybe Ravens could be looking at it like, all right, we got like five mil in cap space. How much money do we really want to allocate? How much additional money do we really want to allocate to our backup quarterback? Not saying that it's the right thing to do or that's the right way to approach it, but I'm thinking that's the Ravens way to approach it. How would you feel if you could combine your four favorite Baltimore Ravens players or just four favorite players in general, combine their attributes and put them all into one? Well, that's what my guy uh, D3 from Cohere Media does uh, with his brand, uh, Hypothetics, uh, because he asked me, he said, Engraven, who are your favorite four Ravens players? I said Lamar Jackson, Kyle Hamilton, Air Reed and Ray Lewis. What can you do for me? And he he put this together. And these are cool. Um, so I wanted to give a special shout out to him. I appreciate you sending me this picture out. And I look forward to when you take this off. Take your business takes off and your brand takes off and you really start making these because I gotta put Team Keep It Clean on, baby. <laughs> 